Hey everybody, how are you? Um, check this thing out. This thing is unbelievably cool. This is number 64 of 500. 19, I'll read some specs here in a minute. I'll play it for a minute until we get some more friends uh, joining us. Let's do. Tell me where you're coming from. I'm Jeremy, this is Guitar Hunter, and uh, yeah, it's a good day so far. Today's a, kind of a chilly day here in Virginia. It's like 40s, 50s, and um, the ground in the studio here started getting quite cold, and I'm being a baby. Oh, you can see my microphone. Oops, that's embarrassing. Um, let me do it like this. And now, you can hear me, but you can't see it. So, um, hey oh, Lone Gray Wolf is here. So, uh, what do you know about this guitar? Tell me what you think, what you feel, what you know. How freaking cool is that? Gold on gold on gold, man. Mr. Raymond Alexander's here. And you remember? I didn't know that. I forgot about that. Raymond, Mr. Tube himself. How's, uh, how's life, man? This thing just showed up the last couple weeks, and uh, this is a custom shop. It's from 1989. This is a custom shop. They call this the uh, the limited the HLE Strat. There are only 500 of these. They're all gold. They have some really cool 57 specs. So uh, seven and a quarter inch, um, seven and a quarter inch radius, which means. So yeah, it's a it's a narrower radius, so you, you get a little more. You gotta feel like your finger kind of going with that curve across the fingerboard. But anyway, um, this thing was sent to me. It's very cool. This is a 1957 reissue Strat. It's a Homer Haynes, and so this was made in 1989. I was only two years old in 1989. And uh, this is a rare guitar from a second run of limited edition guitars from the newly formed Fender Custom Shop that started in 1987. In 1988, Fender made a decision to reissue the, How the Homer Haynes limited signature, limited edition Stratocaster. There were only 500 units, and this is one of them. This is number 64 of this run. And uh, yeah, the guitar is from 1957 with a run of 500. Oh wait, hang on. This is a limited, there were 500 of the Howard Haynes spec that they used to do. Homer Haynes. And uh, this is an exact replica of the original instrument that utilized the same machine bent bridge saddles and five spring tremolo. How cool is that? Um, the pickup switch was the older three position, but this one's been updated to a five way. Uh, give me a fret fire while I hold my beer. Rich, I'm glad you're here, buddy. the story this guitar showed up to me i'm going to be selling this guitar or trading it here's the thing i need to turn this guitar into a 60s uh or a brazilian d28 so can you help me do that 
Do you have a D28 or do you have a pocket full of cash and a friend who has uh, an old 28? So anyway, um, that's all I got for this one for now. Um, let me go mute that channel while I'm thinking about it. And I'll mute that. I'll do this. And there we go. So, yeah, man. I'm glad that everybody's here. So I see Mr. Jake Weber's here from New Jersey. Uh, Lone Gray Wolf is here. Uh, Sonia. Hey, Sonia. How are you? How's the capo? Um, Sonia was a winner last week of the Page Pro. Did I take it? Oh, it's back here. Here's another guitar that I still want to talk about and talk about how much I love, which this is uh, the FERC. This is the Vintage 2 OM. So Sitka Spruce Top, Red Rosewood Back and Sides. It's in Dadged. <laughs> I've been uh, just working my uh, my fingers to the bone trying to figure out some new celtic dad Dadgetty stuff. But uh, yeah, man. So anyway, let's see. Snowy South Dakota. Dan is here from Ontario. Uh, Ontario. And um, let's see. Grant is from Derry, New Hampshire. Uh, Mr. Raymond Alexander, Mr. Tube himself. Uh, Rich is here. Lone Gray Wolf is here. Um, oh, good question. Grant, do you like acoustic or electric better? Um, I love all guitars in all shapes and forms, but I think I'm probably more on the side of acoustic guitars, um, at least for the last 15 years or so. Um, yeah, since about, I'm 35 now, since 20. Um, I had a death metal band, like a kind of a thrashy, Swedishy metal band when I was like 18, 19, and 20. And I just got really tired of how hard we'd work to write really technical things. And then you'd play in a basement and it's super loud. And it was also during the time of like that. The Judd Judd Neener Neener kind of uh, time. So I kind of lost interest in playing like heavy music in the mid, in the late 2000s. I got really interested, really, really interested in acoustic guitars. And uh, so. So I think for me, if I had to pick between acoustic and electric, I love both. I have room for both in my life and my heart, but I, I lose sleep over acoustic guitars. And um, there's something about like just fewer variables. That's what kind of gets me with an electric guitar is it's the guitar, like it's the wood and the finish and the hardware and the pickups and the wiring and then the, the electronics and then what cable I'm using into an amplifier, and then that amplifier is turning all that signal into a digital signal that's going into an interface, and then I'm hearing it out of speakers, and so there's just too many variables. Where for me, I'm like, this guitar is wood, I put my hands on it, and it makes noise to my ears. So it just feels like a more, that, that's been my thought the last couple of years. Um, hey, Daniel, Daniel and the Deem, hey buddy. Uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I did, it was okay. We had uh, our kids had a stomach bug. So it was rough. And then the truck broke down in Knoxville on the way home. So it was, it was rough. Um, but, uh, Daniel, I actually haven't. Uh, Daniel dropped off a guitar while he dropped off two guitars while I was gone. One is his, uh, Martin D18 Modern Deluxe. And, uh, yeah, I haven't actually, I'm sorry. Uh, I came back and I've just been swamped, uh, with stuff. So Mr. Rob Baker is here from Delaware. Hey buddy, how are you? Um, Daniel, you're right. This FERC is great. Oh, and that capo on there is the Page Pro. That's how I got there. Because last week, Sonia and Rich won Page Pro capos. Um, and, uh, yeah. So Sam says, hey, Jeremy, bought a Tone Traveler yesterday, or uh, bought a Tone Traveler, arrived yesterday. Looking forward to hearing some goodness. Thanks for the video. Those are fun. Mine's right here. 
if you missed that video, that one came out this week. The Tone Traveler. So it's a, uh, a little doodad that sits on your guitar right here. And then... So yeah, so this thing sits on the guitar and then it plays music or plays tones that are led by this, the tablet. And then it helps your guitar kind of break in. And um, I left it on the on that FERC that I just played for two weeks, and um, which the guys have since reached out to me and said, hey, it probably didn't last as long as you thought, but I know for sure it lasted four days. So it definitely changes the tone of guitar, so that's exciting. So anyway, um, yes, so. Rob says, missed not running into you in the Philly Guitar Show. Last year was better as far as inventory. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to make it this year. We had some family stuff going on. I was in Nashville, and I just wasn't able to go to the Philly show, which uh, made me quite sad because I love uh, I love those shows, and they're always really fun to go to, and it's always fun to meet people that uh, we just have a shared heart for guitars and watch YouTube videos about guitars. So anyway, I'll hope to meet you next year, Rob. Rob? Bob. Rob. Got it. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, Daniel, just make sure to keep your guitar upright when using the tone, when the tone traveler is running. Why is that? I get it. That's the other thing that I did wrong in that video is that I laid the guitar down, but I didn't have a guitar stand, and I didn't want to leave it upright in a closet, um, so I left it down. But I also thought this through, if the idea is moving the guitar, a guitar sitting in a case, you're probably putting a lot of energy into the case. So I wonder how much better my case sounds as a as an instrument. Um, oh, Rob, we did. Okay. Oh, it's funny. It's such a tiny little, uh, tiny little thing for me to see there. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, man. All right. Well, I've been trying to sell a bunch of stuff. And I've been getting more scams than ever before. So the, the ambition of today's goal is to do two things. Number one, to, to kind of show you how people are scamming you. And then also to show you what to do when people are trying to scam you, when you're trying to buy or sell guitars online. Now, some of this stuff will translate into all kinds of, uh, like, if you're selling stuff for your house or just selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace or buying stuff for business. Some of these things will be helpful overall. So, anyway... Um, Daniel, you said I thought it was because the speaker would could wear out the glue. I don't know. Yeah, Sam says you've been getting the Zell. So let's talk about it. Let's get into this. Um, so we're just going to jump straight in. I'm going to run through. I think there are seven scams that I've kind of figured out in the last little bit. And then at the end, I'll tie it together with a, a to-do list. Like, hey, if you're dealing with this, here's what you should do. And uh, here's how to spot a scam. Because one of the things I offer, and this week... Um, one of the things that came up this week, I do a lot of coaching. So when people have guitars that they're trying to sell, I'll, that's where this whole idea came from. Um, a friend of mine is trying to sell a guitar in Northern Virginia. He's owned it since the 70s. And he's ready to sell it and he's ready to move on. But he's nervous about, one, selling a guitar that he loves and has been with him for, you know, 40 years. The other thing is that he just is nervous about the idea of meeting someone, selling a guitar, receiving cash, having that much cash in hand, should he take a cashier's check. So part of what I offer when I do these coaching things on the website is just to walk you through the process of that. And um, and I, I'm finding out that I have a higher risk tolerance than other people. Like, uh, I don't know, I'd rather have cash. And it, I'd rather have cash than a cashier's check. And I understand that they're effectively the same, um, but I don't know. I like, I like cash and bringing a marker and whoosh, just checking those bills out. So anyway, um, Evan Ogden's here. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, okay. So there are other there are other talks here. Um, okay, got it, got it. All right, let's get into this. Scam number one that I keep seeing is for people to send the item before payment is received. Um, and this is one that, I mean, if it's your first time selling a guitar or buying a guitar, I could see how it would be like, go ahead and pay, and when payment clears, I'll send you the guitar. Um, which, 
that only works if you know the person. Because if you don't know the person, you are just giving money to a stranger with almost no recourse, uh, depending on how you do it. If it's like Venmo or PayPal, you have very limited recourse. Um, now, PayPal is better if it gets processed as, a, as goods and services rather than friends and family. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so... Yeah, so, okay, so sending the payment before, sending the item before payment is received. This is a thing that you'll get requested a lot. And usually you're going to get messages from people that the English is clunky or just strange. And now I know there are, there are some of you watching from all over the world. And I'm curious to hear your perspective, like, especially like Rasmus, I see you're here. Hey, buddy. Um, that people in the UK, there's some, uh, you're not in the UK. Um, uh, in the Netherlands, then there are other people that are in the UK. There are people that are in Ireland. There are are people all over the world. Australia, sometimes, this is a little tricky. This is like 6 a.m. in Australia. Um, so, but by and large, what I keep seeing over and over is that like the terms of the deal are shady and the language is clunky. And so those are my usual red flags. But scam number one is, or an easy way to get scammed is just send money before it's actually there. Scam number two is it's just too good to be true. This happens all the time. Um, this happened to me a while ago. Um, I had a, a, I had a woman reach out to me. She claimed to be, uh, do I say her name? She claimed to be someone who, it was the same name as a celebrity. And she claimed to be in the same industry as that celebrity. And when I would look up, I couldn't find anything on her, but I could find stuff on the celebrity person. And it was very strange. And her pitch was my stepdad, my mom remarried a couple of years ago. I didn't know my stepdad very well. He just passed away. They lived in West Virginia, but I've just found out that in San Antonio, Texas, he owns four storage lockers full of guitars. And then she starts sending me pictures and pictures and pictures and then asking, how much are they worth? You have to buy them. Can you come get them tomorrow? Um, and we start working through and I, you know, I did a ton of work to figure out what is all this stuff? And it's all very strange. It was good stuff, but the deal kept feeling too good to be true or just too ridiculous to be believed. And so I ended up um, giving my best offer. I forget my number. I did a video about this. I think I offered 31000 And I was thinking like it was going to be, I would, I would gross. Everything once it was sold would be like fifty five or so. And I think by the time I got a U-Haul to pick everything up and brought somebody with me and got it all. This happened during 2020 as well. Um, maybe it's 2021. Yeah, it was still during like COVID time when you're still like, I don't know, probably shouldn't be around strangers, probably shouldn't fly, probably should wear a mask. It was during that, whatever that time was. Um, so it's been a while. But, um, but yeah, this one for sure, Daniel, I'm glad Daniel said don't say names. Um, I feel like I got around it. I got pretty close. Um, but, but yeah, basically like once I made the offer, then they said, no, that's you, can you do any better? And they knew nothing about guitars and they were trusting so heavily on what I did. And then it just kept, the deal kept changing. So the deal felt too good to be true, but then also kept changing and kept getting more and more complicated. So for me, it really felt like, oh, I think they're trying to scam me. That's when I kind of pieced it together. Um, because they kept saying like, well, you know, so-and-so came and picked up a guitar because they'd heard about it from you. I was like, I have not told a single person about this. Like I was, I think it was four days. I didn't tell anybody. I just was kind of checking prices and kind of working stuff through and looking at our numbers to see if I can make any of that cash work. And, uh, anyway, so it ended up being, uh, way too good to be true because it was completely not true. And, um... As far as I know, it was all a scam and the guitars disappeared. And then a few months later, they tried to kind of get me again, saying like, oh, well, they found six more guitars at the house. And they're all, what's interesting is they were guitars I'd already seen. They were supposedly in Texas, but now they were like in a house. So anyway, if the deal's too good to be true, it definitely is. Um, scam number three. Oh, this one, this one takes a little bit of explaining. Third party pickup with a check and then reimburse people. This is this this is the scam I see over and over and over. And it's sometimes when people will ask, someone mentioned this earlier, if like someone asks for a code, hey, I'm gonna send you a code, can you do this? 
Or as soon as somebody switches gears to talking about the item, is this item still for sale? I've been selling a couple cars here and there this year, and this happens a lot in that world too. And so the thing that you'll keep seeing is people will say like, is this item still available? How long have you had the item? And then once you give a little bit of information, like a text back and you say, it's still available, I can meet anytime you're around, evenings are best, whatever. Then they come and they say, um, oh, I have a story I can tell after this. Um, someone remind me to tell the, this happened to me like as a, a YouTuber, like someone reached out to me. And I think they're going after YouTubers in particular. But, okay, so they will say, hey, I'm going to buy this guitar from you. And then they say, my agent, so you'll deliver it to my agent or the purchaser or whoever. Like, And they'll always say, I'm out of town, but if you can work with this person, I'll send you a check or I'll send you a payment. And the idea is... They will use stolen, and I don't know the exact mechanics of this, but the best I've been able to surmise how this, how this con works is that they will reach out first and they will overpay you. So they will send you a check or they'll uh, send you PayPal, um, like the PayPal checks that take a couple days to clear. And when they do, it'll be for too much money. And then what they'll say is, oh, well, I know yours was only 1500 That was my mistake. I gave you 1800 If you can, that extra $300, give it to the person that you're dropping the guitar off with or the item with, and that is their payment for shipping it to me or delivering it to me. And so it makes you feel like, oh, well, okay, well, maybe it's a mistake or maybe they're just paying. They have some deal with the friend or whoever's picking this thing up. But what ends up happening is... Once you meet with the person and give them that extra cash in between the 300 bucks in this example, then they either dispute the payment or the check bounces or they get their money back. You're out of the guitar and then you've also given away $300 to that person. So it's some racket between those two people. Somebody setting up the deal is just queuing up to get that 300 bucks or the extra money. So this is one that I see all the time, literally. Um, a little old lady at the gym the other day was explaining this to me. Uh, she was telling me about like that she got taken. And so they've asked me to come speak at a community center uh, here in Harrisonburg um, about this, like to help people kind of work through how, um, how bad actors are going to work on the internet to get money out of their, out of these people. So yes, yeah, so this is a big one for sure. Um, so, let's see, Beaker Dabs says, Yes, definitely, I recently had a guitar listed, and when I said to meet at the police station, radio silence. Yeah. Um, so, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so, the third-party pickup and reimbursement. That's one that, like I said, you'll see it everywhere. I mean, it's... And you can kind of suss out that that's where it's headed. And um, as soon as they use the vague language of, like, how long have you had this item? What's the least you would take for this item? If they don't know anything about guitars, they're probably not gonna be buying your D18 Modern Deluxe, or they're probably not gonna be buying your Epiphone Les Paul. Like, they're gonna know something about guitars to know that this is a good deal. Um, and so, anyway, uh, man, this one, this one is predatory for sure, and they're like definitely trying to get uh, money out of your pockets, you know? So, okay, next one. Scam number four is overpayment and reimburse. Now this one, there's a nuance and there's a story I need to tell. So this one is very similar to the one before, but it doesn't necessarily involve that third party. Um, it Im Yeah, it's two parties. It's that, that person's doing the same gig. So two weeks ago, I got an email and it seemed very official. No, it was a f Instagram message, but it came from an account that had a couple thousand subs a couple thousand followers and it looked like a pretty wealthy, affluent guy, probably my age, and he said, hey, my kid really likes your YouTube channel and he really loves uh, the Trolls movie. And I was wondering, could you do a version of Can't Stop the Feeling? Could you record it and um, I'll pay you $1,000. Would that, like, it would just be fun to have a video from you as a YouTuber. And I was like, okay, that's a weird request. And I like tentatively agreed. I was like, that sounds pretty fun. Tell me more about what you're thinking. I'm not really a performer. I like... I make videos, but I'm not necessarily like a YouTube guitar guy. 
and um, and they the guy was like didn't answer my questions, but then very quickly was like, okay, well I'm gonna go ahead um, I'm gonna give you five hundred dollars now, and then I'll give you the next five hundred dollars when you're done with it. And um, oh, if you could, uh, what's your mailing address? And I was like, nope. And so I uh, I sent our PO box. And then after that, the the guy came back. It was like maybe an hour later, came back and said, I am so sorry. I had a total mistake. Um, the business account that we're writing it from, my assistant wrote the check out wrong for $5,000. So if you're okay with it, I'll mail you the check. You can cash it. And then when it's done, can you just, you'll mail me a check with for $4,500 or you can just, or you can send me money through Zelle. You can send me the $4,500 through Zelle. And I immediately knew that this was, because uh, I watch uh, Spammer, is it Spammer Payback? Scammer Payback? Scammer Payback. Um, and so I knew this scam. I've seen this on their channel. And um, man, it just, it couldn't get me. Uh, yeah. Daniel says guitar hunter claims to not be a guitar guy on YouTube. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I don't. Anyway, whatever. I'm not. I'm not somebody that would like write and record and produce a music video. Like, that's just it's out of my lane a bit. Um, I might do it for you know if this wasn't a scam. But very quickly, I saw this was a scam, and I just said like I kind of tried to head it off in the pass, and I said I just said. Does this scam work for you often? And then radio silence. And then I was like, hey, have you seen this video? This is a couple hours later. I sent them uh, one of the scammer payback videos that was that exact premise. Like, oh, I overpaid you. This is Norton antivirus. We returned, you know, $50,000 to you. You need to send us, you know, $4,000 or whatever. And um, so, man, anyway, so this is one like, it's coming for a lot of people and it's coming in a lot of industries, but I'm seeing it all the time in guitar space. Um, someone called me about this a couple weeks ago saying like, Hey, just so you know, this guy like offered to overpay and they said it was an accident and then they needed money back. So it's all, um, don't give or receive money in a way that you don't understand the details. That's a good like kind of principle. And we'll get to like the to do and what to, you know, the, what I actually recommend for stuff. So, um, number five, this is one that is pretty problematic if you're shipping stuff. And if you're not using the platform that you're shipping, like if you put it on Craigslist and then you take money through PayPal and you ship it to somebody. And so this is the one called the lost package. And this is where they literally just lie and they say that they never received the guitar or they do some manipulation of UPS or FedEx or USPS and it either doesn't get delivered or it gets moved to some other address or something happens that they both get the guitar and your money and you never get anything or uh, vice versa. Like they get your money and you don't get a guitar. This one is very painful. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, this one, because then they have the ability to go through your credit card processor, your PayPal, they go through whatever form you sent money through and they can dispute it. And then if they can just bank on the bureaucracy taking over that business or just the red tape and then you get screwed out of a guitar. So don't do that. Not good. Um, Daniel says the lost package is FedEx's SOP in Philly, scam or no scam. Yeah, what if it's a scam from the big boys? Um, just lots of things, you, you know. Oh man, there's this, I saw a Seinfeld clip today that was like, just write it off. Like Jerry, just write, it's Kramer telling Jerry to write something off. And then Jerry's like, I don't think you know what that means. And I don't know what that means, but I know that I don't know what that means. And uh, yeah, and so the whole idea is, yeah. They'll try and write it off. Like, I'm still fighting FedEx over the broken Huss and Dalton. And, um, yep. And then that guy also charged back my credit card processor. So now I'm both out the money that I sold the guitar for. I do have the guitar back, but I have to put a big amount of money into the guitar to get it fixed. So, problem. But, anyway. So, <clears throat> yeah. So the lost package. It's a thing that happens for sure. And you got to be really careful. A lot of it comes to, like, it's really tricky to buy or sell guitars from strangers. That's one of the themes that you'll start seeing. 
Uh, scam number six is uh, move off of the platform. Um, the scam is to get you to move off of the platform that you have the thing listed on or to get money not through the trusted route that you're going through. Um, lots of the platforms now are aware. Like they've got, they're kind of, they won't say that they're reading your messages, but for sure, I am, I am sure that Reverb has in their terms of service that any of the messages going back and forth for, they can absolutely see it because when you have resolutions, they'll go in and they'll read your messages back and forth. So, yeah. So, <clears throat> one of these is, um, like, if you move off of Reverb and all of a sudden they're like, just PayPal me or just send me money through Zelle, you're just moving out into the wild, wild west. Um, and at most, you're going to save seven to ten maybe twelve percent but you're but i mean are you would you buy that risk for that extra what so if you're going you know paypal friends and family is what three and a half percent so if you're you know that's a lot of work for three and a half to five seven percent and so would you buy the risk like would you take that gamble you're standing at the casino and you're like Hey, I'm going to pay this much money for that much risk. None of us, I, don't, I think very few of us would take that risk. Unless there are things that mitigate that risk. You know the person, they have a public reputation. It's through a legitimate website that you're buying from. Like some shops will say, if you buy our guitar through Reverb, it's this price. But if you call us directly and buy it through the shop itself, the business, you can, you know, we'll, we'll cut off the Reverb fee. And that makes total sense. I don't know if it's probably, I'm sure it would be against Reverb's terms of service. Um, but. <clears throat> okay, yeah, Reverb, Evan says Reverb 100% reads the messages. I even got dinged for trying to take a deal off of the platform, which, fair, I guess. Yeah, Morgan says, the only time I've ever moved off of Reverb was when I found somewhere local and it was in a situation where he handed me the item and I handed him the cash in person. Yeah. Woo! Tyler. Tyler Heron says, until Reverb emails you a warning about about trying to work a deal. Not that that's ever happened to me. Yeah. I, I think it's happened to me as well. Now, I haven't... I mean, I'm quite public on my stance on Reverb. I think it's fine. I think it's expensive, but I think it's fine for selling guitars that have no issues. But if you're selling anything that requires any level of expertise or previous knowledge or just, yeah, don't sell any guitars that have any issues on Reverb. Because if you do, Reverb is going to go against you and they'll protect their buyer more than the seller. But um, I don't know. I continue to see more and more people move away. Hey, speaking of Reverb... A much better way to sell guitars, in my experience. I've sold three guitars now on Sweetwater's Gear Exchange, and I love it. It's been awesome, and I, I think they've fixed a couple of the really good problems. Um, like one thing, and it is tricky, but one thing is they don't release the money to you as the seller until you get a four or five star uh, review, which is really good because they just want to make sure that each deal is really good. And um, so far I've sold two guitars that are brand new that I just had for videos. Maybe three guitars. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, anyway. Um, don't move stuff off the platform that you're buying from. One, because it's probably against the terms of service and you'll get dinged. But also, you're moving into the wild, wild west. It's kind of like, step into this dark alley and let's make that same deal. And you're like, it's probably okay. But if it's not okay, it's really not okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Don't move stuff off the platform. Scam number seven, counterfeits. This is becoming a more and more common problem and I'm shocked and amazed at how often it happens. One of the reasons I always get asked why I don't buy more um, Gibsons, particularly Les Pauls. I really like Les Pauls. I just don't buy many of them because there are so, so, so many uh, counterfeits, uh, Chibsons, fake guitars. I mean, every single day I can find one. I, and that's kind of a challenge. If I had unlimited resources, one of the video series I would do is um, like 
could I find a fake Gibson every day? Like, how many days in a row could I find and buy a fake Gibson? Like, I bet, without a ton of work, I bet I could make it at least two weeks, even being in the middle of nowhere in Virginia. I'm not in the middle of nowhere, but being in the mountains in Virginia, I mean, somebody called me yesterday saying, hey, I just found three old Les Pauls. Uh, you know, would you want to make a video on them and check them out? And then he sent me pictures, and I was like, every single one is fake. Like, one was an L6S that somebody had swapped over, and uh, and it said Les Paul. The other one was the worst, like, the most bloated-looking version of a Les Paul that was uh, had a headstock conversion. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, Gibson is the most counterfeit. But, with that said, I'm starting to see a lot like every couple weeks I will find or I will have someone send me um someone will send me like a Martin and it's always like a D45 um yeah it's a D45 or D42 and they're always like look at this it's so beautiful you think I should get this and it's like $3800 and it's a Gibson or it's a a Martin D45 <clears throat> and it's just like straight up like it's a 2 or 300 dollar guitar <clears throat> made in Southeast Asia somewhere and is just a straight up copy. And that's the problem is, I mean, they're going, they're going for people that want, they're going for people that have not owned that kind of guitar before. And they're just trying to make it just, it's that balance of like the most money that they could get somebody to spend and the least amount that that thing could legitimately go for. And um, yeah, tons of PRS counterfeits as well. Grant just said that. And uh, yeah, so Evan says, I did get my Gibson ES333 on, or by finding on Reverb and then the guy telling me it was on Craigslist. You have to really trust your intuition and I got a great deal on that guitar. Yeah, I think you have to, you have to be able to weigh the like cost benefit reward of like, because Reverb does save your bacon. Um, you know, reverb is probably a much better thing for a buyer than it is for a seller. So Beaker says, I actually reached out to you, Jeremy, the guitar hunter through a phone chat and you ended up buying it. Thanks again. Really helped me out. Oh, that's awesome. Which one did you get? Um, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I sell a lot of guitars and I've, so because I'm so publicly anti reverb, I still like, I'm not going back to reverb. I've been using Sweetwater gear exchange, but I mean, literally, I think one of the main motivating factors why I grew my YouTube channel to where it is now is so that I can sell guitars without having to rely on reverb. And when I have an issue, which it's very, very rare, um, I fall on the sword. Like I try to self insure keep that money around until everybody is completely hunky-dory and happy and uh hunky-dory did you guys grow up with that phrase my mom always said that like hunky-dory um but yeah so when stuff goes wrong I, I try and fix it now somebody asked about the a couple people asked about the huss and dalton where we are on that one um the guitar came back to me it got damaged by fedex um i have since filed a claim with fedex i'm working that process um, they haven't gotten back to me yet, but I continue to kind of push and add energy to that. The guitar is being repaired now, and so it'll be a time in the future. Not sure when it'll be done, um, but once it's done, um, yeah. So anyway, it's problematic uh, because there's some money tied up in there. that I sold that guitar to help my family in a time of need, and now like, I literally don't have the money back. So that's the other thing is the guy charged back my credit card company saying that I was defrauding him and that I sold him a defective guitar, which I can prove that that's baloney. I also have, you know, evidence of him saying things to the contrary, that the guitar is fine and that he just wants to return it. So he's trying to force the system. I'm having to fight the bank, his bank, my bank, the credit card processing company. Um, so anyway, I've chosen to not like blow up everybody and make a youtube video explaining all of it but it's uh it has really made me want to like terminate my relationship with my credit card processor because without any consultation to me without any advo advocacy for me to that account without any you know they sent me an email the day after saying hey this thing happened but they'd already taken the money out of my account 
and um, it was just it wreaked so much havoc, and um, yeah. So I'm just gonna have to continue to uh, just fight. So anyway, hopefully it'll be okay, and I'll get the money back for a guitar that was destroyed by FedEx, and then I'll be able to just put some money back into a guitar that was damaged and then abandoned by the owner, because that's effectively what has happened. So. Anyway, um, Rasmus says, okay, a little story. About three months ago, I messaged a seller about a 1965 J50. It needed a lot of work, but it's cool. Long story um, is he he is quite sick, and he wants to send it to me for free. First, I thought it was a scam, but I have messaged him a lot, and I've even uh, chatted with the fella. Lovely guy. It's a shame he's so ill. Oh, man. Yeah, man, that's, I mean, that stuff will happen. Like, you'll start seeing, especially on those guitars that someone has had and loved, but they know that it needs work, and they, uh, like, people transition into thinking about their legacy. How will they be remembered? What good are they going to do in the world? So that's good, man. I mean, it's, you're the right, you're the right person for it. If you guys don't know, Rasmus is an incredible young guitar builder in the Netherlands. Uh, go follow him on, he's building a beautiful guitar that's going to wind up with me. And uh, it's coming down the line. Rasmus, I need to text you and figure out um, timeline and what we need to do and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But uh, you are the man, and it's an amazing guitar, and I'm super excited. So, anyway. Um, so, Evan, did you get a headstock repair on it or entirely new neck? We're just going to do a new neck. Um, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like cracked headstocks. And so we looked at the difference in price, like, yeah. So to me, I'd rather do a new neck because the other advantage why I want to do a new neck is that then we have like completely correct neck angle, which the action was fine, but I want to do it just as right as we can do it. So anyway, um, so Juka says, yeah, bro, that's standard for credit card processors. They are the, they auto credit the purchaser, but the merchant still has the option to provide proof. No way you should, you should eat that chargeback lying down dude i've fought it so hard um but it really is crazy like i'm the one paying the fees on every credit card transaction and they have no they they are not advocating for merchants at all like they just roll over and give money back to the credit card companies now it's still in disputes and it's we've got like another couple weeks on it but i just have had to continue to just uh, just every couple days waste an hour or two just holding people to what their terms of service actually are. So, anyway. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So, here's the next question. What do you do with all this? Like, what do we actually do with this? So, number one, research the person and the item. That's like one of the first things I do if I'm selling something through Facebook Marketplace. I click through and look at their profile. I'm not looking to see any actual information about them. But I just want to make sure they were a real person, which this is still why I think Facebook Marketplace is one of your best bets, particularly in the U.S. Unlike Craigslist, Craigslist is the freaking Wild West, like completely anonymous. But Facebook Marketplace, you can say like, oh, that dude went to a high school in North Carolina and he has friends and it looks like he's a welder and he likes eating sandwiches. Like you just have basic info to where I'm like, OK, like this guy. Probably likes guitars, probably knows what he's talking about. It's not just a crazy robot. But if you get to someone and you see, like, I've had this happen before, where you're like, oh, it goes to this person's name, and it looks like, you know, a guy or a gal, a spouse, some kids, they do some work, but then the last four pictures are, like, um, these, like, super cheesy MS Paint-looking photos about, like, uh talk to me about crypto or like talk to me about you know whatever it's usually like crypto or um bitcoin that kind of stuff and so when they do that you can see like oh this account's probably hacked and it's just the same hackers trying to then work out other cons on people so anyway uh yeah so yeah <clears throat> so number one research the person and the item i mean the item is the biggest thing it's like make sure that before you sell something or before like someone offers you something, if somebody offers you a trade, just do some basic research, make sure you know what's going on. Uh, number two, I do think you need to trust the pat the platforms and pay through them. We've talked about this. Like 
I would still do a deal on reverb knowing it's expensive rather than moving it off into another way of paying. Unless the qualifiers to this are like, unless it is a person you know, or it is like a rock steady, like you have some protection. So PayPal is still pretty good um, for protecting you. Um, as long as people don't abuse that system. And there are certainly people that do. There are people who are actively trying to, um, by fraudulent and illegal means, get money that does not belong to them out of your account and into theirs. So that's a real thing. So anyway. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> number three, deal locally when you can. Local deals are better. Um, and they're better because they're safer. They're better because you can see a person. They're better because you get cash. You don't go through a credit card processor or you don't go through PayPal. Just if you can do deals close or close by. Now, the thing with that is for me, if I sell stuff locally, I, I'm going to sell it a lot cheaper because I just don't, I'm not able to get top of the market in Harrisonburg, Virginia, um, especially for any of the complicated, more expensive stuff I have, like selling this rich Allen telly over here. Like that's a $2,000 guitar, but I've had lots of people offer me $1,100 here in town. And uh, I've said, just no way, that's crazy. Like that's too cheap, sorry. So I'll continue kind of fishing it. Um, and then, you know, like if I look around at other stuff, like, you know, like my FERC, no one's heard of FERC around here in the Valley yet. Uh, but some of the stuff that's a little more reliable, like my American Pro 2 Strat up here, my Pink Paisley telly back there. Um, some of those things like you can get more money close but anyway deal locally when you can because even if you take less cash you're gonna pay no fees and so anyway um another quick thing oh well hang on I, I can tie it into number five number four uh pay to play guitar for money oh this is um same time man like you have the guitar or you have my cash at no point do you have both of those things at no point it's like with cars um like you can have the keys uh, like you can have the keys and drive the car, but you cannot have the title or like I can have your cash. You can have it, but I still have the title. It's all of this. Like, don't ever let them get leverage on like if they have the keys and the title, um, and they still have their cash. Oh boy. Like you are now officially in trouble. And so, um, yeah, same thing. Like none of this, like, hey, I'll pay you half today and then I get paid on Friday and then we can meet up next Saturday, but I'm just gonna keep the guitar in the meantime. Like, nope, that doesn't work. I'm not your bank. I'm not financing this. So if you want, you can give me your $500 and I'll hang on to it. Um, yeah, or hang on to your money. We'll meet next Friday. You have to pay all of it right now and before I let the guitar go. So anyway, just keep keep it moving. So. Uh, F. Kane says, um, I followed you for a while now, for a couple of years. You make some great videos. Not a hacker. LOL. Thanks, man. <laughs> That's so good. Um, yeah, I, it's fun now, like, cause I have like, I think I'm coming up on 500 videos. So now I've, I've quite, I have, I have many of the answers to a lot of questions people are looking for if you're trying to buy and sell guitars. Um, that's really fun to kind of, to kind of work on it. Um, Joel from Joel Devus Media. Uh, hello from Charleston, South Carolina. Dude, I love, I love Charleston. Um, what's that bar with all the dollar bills on it right downtown? Charleston's super fun. We used to do a pirate tour, like my guys from, from growing up in college. Um, we would get together every summer. Um, yeah. So let's see, what else do we have here? Number five, tell people when and where you're meeting someone. Um, <clears throat> this is a thing like if you're selling a guitar, so this is <clears throat> when and where to meet. Tell somebody you're meeting somewhere just so they know, like if it's four hours, they haven't heard from you. You're not, I don't want to say face down in a ditch somewhere, but um, just, yeah, um, to be completely safe. This is like that video I told, there's a video about this, when I was like 19, I went to a, I told no one where I was going, I went and bought a Larivee in the middle of nowhere. And, um, it was just straight up the worst series of things I could have done, which is I lowballed a guy after we'd worked to do, I told no one where we were and it was a very dangerous thing. And the guy looked at me and says, Hey buddy, listen, 
Only you, me, and Jesus know you're here. It's like, oh my gosh. Oh, look, here's that other $300. I just want to leave. Please don't murder me. And um, so, yeah, tell people where you're going. Make sure they know. And um, yeah, so that's that's a really good one. Meet somewhere public. Starbucks is good. Um, one thing I've noticed at different places in the country, police stations are starting to offer these like cash deal safe spaces. The trick is, and it's not even the law, like in Louisiana, it is not actually the law that you have to do sales tax on private party transactions, but there is a place like in Louisiana, they have these things where it's like meet at the police station and then you have to fill out all the paperwork with the clerk of court or whoever, and they're going to take, they're going to assess and take uh, sales tax on these things. So do what you will. Uh, but for me, like, I'm not gonna, anyway, it, I'm advocating you follow the law, but anyway, that's one of those, like, hmm, do I actually have to, do I have to pay sales tax or does somebody have to like, you know, do I have to pay whatever? Um, so anyway, um, Daniel, that's a great idea. 500th episode. I'll have to look it up and see how many, um, yeah, I keep I haven't done a special video out of think since ten thousand subscribers. Whoops. So I think I'm gonna I started working on a fortieth on a forty thousand subs. Uh, although this last month has been the worst month for me gaining new subscribers. So hey, if you're not subscribed, think about subscribe don't think about it, just do it. It's free, doesn't matter, but it matters to me. Um so subscribe if you're not. Hit a thumbs up on this video. Um, because, uh, I try to not live or die by how well these videos do, but it certainly benefits my family. And, um, yeah, I have lots of guitars, but these guitars are coming as a result of just hard work. And, you know, anyway, you guys are the best. Um, have you noticed the increase in subscribers for the acoustic shop since you were there? They've definitely, I think they were at like 6,000 when I was there. And now they're up around 10,000. So it's really good. I mean, they're also, those dudes are working so hard. Um, and they're good and they're fun. And um, I really wish them the best. And I'm super excited for them. So John, Jason, and Jeremy, I mean, those dudes are, and Hinkley. Let's let's be clear. Like, Hinkley is so hardworking. She's the producer there. She's like videographer and cinematographer. And uh, they've got a great team. So all of them. I mean, I, like, you know. If I could commute to work from Virginia to Missouri and hang out with them more, I certainly would. Because I just like their shop a lot. So, um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Meet in a public place, meet in a Starbucks, somewhere like that. Um, number seven, decline overpayments. Just, that's an obvious one. If, if people are like, if the deal's weird, just call it off. Like, there are enough people that love guitars that are going to be excited about what you have for sale. You can find somebody. Um, yeah. Yeah. And number eight is limit personal information. Information is power. And you give away a lot of power. And I'm bad about this. I'm an oversharer. I'll tell people stories. I'll give information. And it wasn't until I did a couple hundred YouTube videos and someone emailed me and asked about the heart medication that I take. And they're like, I take the same heart medication that you do. I was like, how the hell uh, did you know that? And he was like, oh, I just listened to a bunch of videos and he said, like, you never said the name, but you gave me enough information that I pieced together what you have. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's not cool. Um, and so I need to be, yeah, my, my wife will kill me for that stuff. My wife is much more private than I am. Um, for me, I am open to a fault. So anyway, um, oh, Beaker. Oh, my gosh. The, the D42, dude, that one is a freaking stunner. What an incredible guitar. I wish I could have kept it, but yeah, you helped me pay mortgage payment, take care of my kids. So life is good because of you. So thanks, man. Um, so, all right. Well, that's all I have for this. Um, yeah, there we go. That's the end of it. So tell me about, um, yeah, is there anything we haven't talked about in, uh, in Scammers? Let me see. Do 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 do. How that song come to my mind? Um, here's an exciting guitar. Here's a Bourgeois Touchstone OM. I've played this one a little bit here and there, and uh, 
It's now back in Virginia with me. Yeah, so Terry says, my favorite trope. I'll send a money order since I'm since I'm away at my daughter's wedding. I've heard that more than once. I have too. That's a that's a really common like I'm out of town. Can I send you a money order? Can you send me a money order? I'll have someone send it to you. This is Alaskan Spruce Top and then East Indian Rosewood Back and Sides. It's a really excellent guitar. Um, I've been working on a video about this and the bourgeois and then my time with the acoustic shop. It'll be a collaboration video that's like four months late. So. Okay, let's see. Happy week. Uh, I found my dream Martin D28. So thankful I was in a position to get it. Thank you for all the buyer's tips. Love from Dublin, Ireland. Jordan! Dude, what an exciting day. Man, so good. Um, so Beaker still has an, a Taylor 814 with Australian Black Heart Sassafras and a D28E Modern Deluxe. Dude, what an excellent guitar. Um, yep, Jake says, my favorite is I'm serving overseas and I'll have someone pick it up with a cashier's check. Get that one all the time. Me too, man. I see that one a lot. Rasmus says, rule of thumb. If anything seems sketchy, don't do it. Except for the... <laughs> yeah, that was a little... It worked out. That one worked out. Because I think one man's poor communication is another man's scam. And so you just have to be able to suss out those, like, the nitty-gritty details. Um, so Sam says, curious about those touchstones. In your opinion, is it a bourgeois made in China or is it a really expensive Eastman? It's a bourgeois made in China. Like, um, this, uh, let me grab this one. So the OM to me is just a little tight. Um, I, I kind of want to run the tone traveler on it and see if I can get it to open up a bit more. This one is one of the, this is the traveling demo. So this one has probably been on other channels and it's got some like just a little bit of wear from people using like probably an Elliott capo or another cradle style capo. But this one, this one sounds like an absolute cannon. And it, to me, this one feels, looks, sounds like a bourgeois um, or like an HD 28, so. and dad good too so it's not going to be bluegrassy
noodling. It's, dude, it's an excellent guitar. It doesn't feel like an Eastman. So if you don't know, I mean, so this is basically Alaskan Spruce, East Indian Rosewood back and sides. The top is both um, voiced and braced in Lewiston, Maine by Bourgeois, by, um, yeah, by Dana and his team. And then it's sent to the Eastman factory in Beijing and it's assembled there. So it says handcrafted in Lewiston, Maine, and then hand, handcrafted in Lewiston, Maine and Beijing, China. Designed by Dana Bourgeois. And it says, this is uh, the D Vintage TS. Is this Torfi? Is that what the TS means? Um, see there's other chats that came in so green fin says i want to talk to a guy talk to a guy up from the 800 dollars he was asking for his eastman e20 ss with a k and k in excellent condition i told him it was worth more and offered him 900 dollars. he came up to 850 yeah i mean that's that's the good and right thing to do i've done that too i have um i've offered more for guitars that i'm like hey you're asking too little for this especially once you read any of the like the room of what's happening in the family or the person that's selling it. We're like, ah, I priced it low because I just need to sell it. My dad's in the hospital. That was the story with me. Like a guy was selling, it was an American vintage reissue. Um, it was a 62 Strat and it was very cool. And um, at that point those were selling for like 14 to 1600 and he added it at a thousand bucks. And I was like, hey man, I'm gonna pay you 12. I'm still gonna sell it. I'm gonna make some money, but take care of your dad, make some money. So, um, that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it's it's when it's like, oh, I cut, the lady that cut the check wrote a check for 1800, so I'll give that to you, and then you give me back that $700. That's, that's the scam part of it. Um, Eric, that's a great question. Eric says, do you humidify guitars in gig bags? Uh, gets dry up here in North Dakota during the winter, thanks. Um, I do, that's where you could put some of these bad boys in there. Um, you could have some of these humidipacks, or I also have the Boveda ones. I think they're the same thing. I think they're made in the same place. These are kind of chilly. Uh, there's a two-way humidity control. No mess, no worries, enjoy. Uh, so yeah, what basically these work, these work until they don't squish anymore. That's a good, if we've made t-shirts. It works until it don't squish no more. All right, yeah, so, sorry, it's not Torrified, it's the Touchstone series. That's good. So the D Vintage TS. So this is, this is what we are just talking about. This is a, um, the Bourgeois Touchstone, it, Exactly off the sticker, it is the D Vintage slash TS, the Touchstone series. So, basically made by Eastman. I wish I had more something of that. Oh, that's interesting. It's like resonating with the pick. Um, I had, it is interesting, we can talk about humidity real quick and then 
we'll wrap the show after this. So I came back. I was in Nashville for like five weeks in October and the beginning of November. We were back for a little bit. We were back in Nashville for a while. We're now home in December. And when I came back, my boxwood had the most fret sprout of any guitar I've ever had. Like it was amazing. Like how much, like it could actually hurt my hand. Um, so I went and sanded that down the other day and it just shows me that guitar was made in San Diego and came to Virginia, super humid. I guess I got it in the summer, but man, it got grumpy. So your guitars are all going to freak out. So electric guitars too, um, you'll get a lot of fret sprout. That's the biggest place that you'll feel guitars not be right. And when I say fret sprout, it's like the wood shrinks and then you feel the edge, the side of the frets in them. Um, like these, I think this neck is technically, it just has exceptional fret work. That's what it is. Um, but anyway, so. Yeah, uh, so Strumming Dub says, Jeremy, buy distilled water for your humidifiers. I've been meaning to say that for a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm cheap more than anything. Um. Yep. So Ryan says, Jake, I got, I get that check scam of two a lot. Make sure the person's coming by and bring me cash. Yep. John says, my father would say hunky dory, but his grandparents were from Patrick County. I'm sure it's a Virginia thing. <laughs> I also grew up, I asked Ben um, Paget about this too. I grew up saying commode. Like I didn't grow up with a toilet. My parents had a commode. And um, my wife who's from New Orleans laughed at me for that one. Man, this one is so good. So this is the Dreadnought. And um, yeah, how's their bass? I mean, this is every bit as good. Um, like, this is every bit as good as a proper bourgeois. Like, I mean, yeah. I would also expect it to be because it's $28.99, you know? Um, but, and the case that it comes with is exceptional. <coughs> Sorry. Anyway, um, yeah. This has been a fun live show. Hope you guys avoid the scammers. And um, yeah, turn away from your life of crime if you are a scammer. Um, but yeah, this has been a Bourgeois Touchstone. And I've played a bunch of guitars. Got this gold one down here. You guys, if you just jumped in late, have you seen this one? Yo, dog, heard you like gold. Gold on, gold on, gold. So, 1998 uh, custom shop, like early custom shop, 57 reissue with gold anodized pick guard, gold hardware, gold bridge, gold uh, neck plate, tuners, and um, really cool guitar. This is number 60 something, 64 of 500, has a certificate. I'm looking to trade this for a D28, so pre preferably a Brazilian one, or I'll sell it for around six grand. So let's make a deal. If you want one, these are really cool, really hard to find, and just an early example of the custom shops. So. All right, um, all right, everybody. Uh, have you tried Open D tuning? I keep one of my tailors tuned down to Open D and I love it. So I'm close to Open D except I have a fifth here. I have a G, yeah, I have a G there. So what would it be? It would be So that's dad get. I don't know. Open D is very similar. I know it's something with the G. So uh, anyway. All right, Rasmus, I'll send you a message here in a second. Um, and dang, where'd you get that? Oh, the this one came from a guy in Portland, Oregon. Or no, some, I won't tell you where in Oregon, but he's in Oregon. Um, so this one is a consignment. Looking for a new home and just kind of up for a challenge and an adventure. I'll do more on this. Um, I can play it too, and I'll play it out.
Okay, that's working for you. I've got to turn it back on so I can hear it. This is not. here so thanks everybody for watching this has been a really fun day um hope you avoid scams spams and uh have a good weekend so this is custom shop strat and i'll play this and i'm gonna put this thing up and i'll see you guys later bye thanks for hanging out nope hang on hang on nope that one there we go i'm gonna turn this off i'll see you later thanks everybody